Hi everybody, it's Matthew here from Bead Spider. Today we've got another fantastic live tutorial coming to you. This one is part of our Elizabeth necklace series. There's going to be a few videos on this one in total. One which covers how to make the pendant, there'll be a bit about how to do the clasp section, and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how you can actually finish off the complete design by adding all of those little pearls in to the, the finished necklace. Um, I can see already there's been some fantastic conversation going on on the live chat over on YouTube with everybody chatting, talking about chip butties, which uh, I know what that is, being uh, an Australian, but for those of you from uh, all parts of the world, you might be wondering, what are they on about? Feel free to jump onto the YouTube chat and go have a scroll through and see. They're having a good old natter over there, which is good fun. Of course, we do also have loads of people watching over on Facebook as well, seeing as we're live in both places simultaneously. But as I said, today's tutorial, I am making that gorgeous Elizabeth necklace, um, the final pearl section for uh, joining your pendant to your actual clasp piece. Now, if you want to see what the finished pair of clasp and pendant look like, I have them just here in front of me. It's part of the full design. So if you're wondering about this particular design, actually, I should show you, uh, I'll show you the, 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 the pendant piece, which is this one just here, which you can see, it just looks like it's an absolutely sparkling diamond encrusted piece just here, which this uh, is the pendant. And then of course we have our matching clasp just here as well, which has a really cool little pinch clasp function like that there. But anyway, if you have no idea about this design, you haven't seen anything about it, this is actually based off of a necklace that was worn by three generations. I just realized I'm not in the corner. I'll put myself back up here on the screen. But yeah, <coughs> this was a piece that was worn by three different generations of the British royal family. So it was a necklace that was given to the Queen, uh, Queen Elizabeth II, um, in the, I think it was in the 1974, I believe, by the Japanese government, uh, where she wanted a gorgeous freshwater pearl choker uh, necklace and a, and a diamond encrusted pendant to go with. So they gave, gifted her this fantastic necklace. So this is the inspiration of that design. Again, the uh, the the necklace was worn by Diana uh, at a <coughs> at a banquet as well. And then we've also seen Kate Middleton has worn this same necklace a couple of times um, as well since then. So this is where we got the inspiration for this particular piece, which I'll just try and bring up the picture for it. I was hoping I would have it ready in advance, but uh, the file went missing. So if I can find it, let's see, hopefully I can pop it up on the screen very quickly. But essentially, it's a gorgeous design, which we were inspired by having seen it and thinking, do you know what, I'd really love to have a go at seeing if I can figure out how to make that. Now, if you um, are unaware, there is a link in the description below, uh, well, or above, depending if you're on Facebook or on YouTube, where you can actually go and view uh, the kit. We have a kit to make this particular one. So the uh, it's one of our more expensive kits that we've done, but it's because it is so, so special. We've used really, really top, top, top quality materials just to sort of do the piece justice, including the pearls themselves, which we'll be stringing the actual piece onto. So what is so nice about these particular beads is that they are made from the same material as a freshwater pearl, but they are manufactured to be perfectly round. So what that means is that you have that gorgeous natural luster of nacre, but what they actually do is take the shells after the the uh, the muscles have made a pearl and turn them into these gorgeous beads. So that is what our little pearls are. 
in, if this was like an actual freshwater piece with beads as round as this, it would be hundreds. But because we're using the, the shell pearl, it's considerably less than that. But again, the quality of it is exactly the same as if you were with a, a freshwater pearl. Almost. Almost the same. It's like 95% as good as a freshwater pearl. So um, where's that little one second? I've got a picture here somewhere. I know I do. Where are you hiding? Here we are. Here we go. Here we go. So the actual piece itself that we have. Right, I can finally show it up on the screen. So there it is there. So <coughs> the there's the three different generations wearing that design. So the Queen has it there, Diana has it there in the middle, and then Kate Middleton as well on the on the right side there. And then as you can see, we've made our own variation of it, putting some gorgeous crystals in there. There's three different sizes of crystals that we've used. So there's um, there's our micro crystals, which are great, which if I just show you the actual pendant piece just here, uh, let's hopefully get that showing to you. So we have micro crystals on this inner side. We have two by 2.5 mil crystal donuts through this, uh, through the sort of central section. And then we have some round crystals as well, which are on that outer edge on both sides. We're using some crystal nevettes just here, which are five by 10. We've got one at the bottom as well to try and match the actual design. And then for the back, we've sort of made up this in situ piece like this one, which if you watch last week's tutorial on how we made the bracelet, which looks like this just here, which is the gorgeous matching bracelet. Uh, if you watched that tutorial last week, you'll know how to make this part. But anyway, there's going to be a video coming on how to make this part. There's going to be a video coming on how to make this part. But today, so if we have a look, here's a little sample piece uh, where you can see. We'll come and see this piece a bit later. These are what those mother of pearl shell beads look like. So if you have a look, they have the same gorgeous nacre-like natural luster as a normal freshwater pearl. So this is <coughs> uh, the bead that we're going to be working with today, and we're going to attach that to our little pendant piece. So if you want to get the instructions, we have that on pre-order on the website. We also have the kit, which if you want to get, uh, we're going to be emailing everyone the instructions, but if you don't mind waiting a little bit, uh, if you can put a little comment in the section in, at, at checkout saying, I would like uh, the, the, the printed instructions rather than the PDF version, and we send them to you uh, a few days later. So anyway, um, that is what we're going to be using. There's a second colorway I should tell you about actually, which is also very, very spectacular because I see you guys really, really liked our um, dark bracelet that we did. So we've also done a nighttime version, as it were, with these rainbow color crystals for the necklace. So it's going to be the exact same design, but in the much darker, warmer, rainbowy tones like this one. So there's that there. And if I show you what the pearl itself looks like, here they are just here. They are these gorgeous deep blue. So this one is extremely limited edition. So if you want to go and get this, uh, this kit, there are not very many at all, but uh, we do have this one available as an extremely limited edition, which we've called the Empress Elizabeth necklace. So anyway, um, Levita asks, how do I get the printed instructions? So if you want to buy our kit, when you get the, I just realized I'm not in the top corner. Uh, if you want to get our kit, but you want the printed version of the instructions, the uh, thing to do is when you get to the checkout, I will show you this towards the end, uh, which if you get to checkout, there's a little um, space where you can put your 
uh, a little comment in. And if you just comment in there, you can say, hey, I want the, the printed instructions. So we will be sending those ones a little bit later. But in the meantime, if you want to be making this one and you don't care about printed, you'd rather the PDF version, we will send you those. So, <coughs> um, and now uh, one other question as well, which I'll just answer that one is Christina says, can you replace micro crystal with another crystal of the same size? Well, you won't be able to get another crystal of the same size. They are the same size as a seed bead. So that's what why they work. The little micro crystals inside that inner part, same size as a seed bead, but you can of course replace that with a seed bead if you want to. Anyway, let's, um, let's have a go. Uh, with with actually making this piece. So if we grab our pendant, if I just show you on the back, so it's been made with cubic right angle weave. There will be a tutorial video coming of this one. I'm hoping I can get it edited over the weekend. So uh, I'll have it ready this weekend, at least this part for doing the pendant section, the full video for that. It's all filmed and everything. I've just got to finish editing it uh, in there. But essentially, if we have a look on the back, you can see there's little right angle weaves. So it's a right angle, a cubic right angle weave piece that we've done. And these little beads here are going to be the attach points for our pearls. So because we want to do the original necklace is three strands. Uh, sorry, is four strands. Our kit, just to keep the price down a little bit more, um, we've got it as three strands. It's a three strand variation. But if you want to get an extra strand of the white pearls, you can also get those and turn it into a four strand version. They are the mother of pearl, white mother of pearl beads. But anyway, um, with these little beads just here, each one, this is where we will attach our pearls. So it's a very, very simple little connection to do. This is the easiest part of the whole thing that we're going to go through, hence why it's going to be live today. So I've got myself some of those pearls just here. I've already cut them loose, but when it comes to <coughs> do this uh, necklace piece around here, you need to obviously first and foremost figure out the size that you want it to be. So obviously if you want it to, it's it's designed to be a choker that sits about here. This piece from here to here is about an inch across at the narrowest. Uh, it gets a little bit wider, a bit further down. But then we also have our lovely clasp, which again is about, because it will usually, when it's on your neck, sit something like this. This from here to here is about an inch and a half or maybe three or four centimeters or so, something like that. Um, so you need to just take into account the, the length that you want it to go from this clasp to here. Now, I personally think doing it manually for the first row is a little bit better. So you start with the first row. You don't do a full attachment until you've checked the sizing and you go, do you know what? This is a good size. I'm happy with that. And then you complete it. But anyway, when you're doing your strands, the first one is going to attach around about here. Then the second is about here, the third one is about there, and then the fourth one is a bit further down. So that is to go to give you that same look as what the original piece has. So see that? See, one's near the top, then they just progress down with a space of one bead, one bead, one bead on the back. So zooming in a little bit, if we have a little look, we'll connect to this one for our topmost bead here. The way to know which one that is, if this is our very, very, very top bead up here, the very point of our work, it's the one, two, third size eight seed bead on that outer edge just there. So this is the one we're going to be connecting to. So to begin with, I'll flip both of these pieces over so that we know what we're going to do is this, the one that's highest, on our pendant connects to the bottom of our clasp. Then the one that is next connects a little higher up. And then the very lowest one connects to the top of our clasp section. So the clasp, <coughs> uh, the clasp as well 
there's going to be a tutorial for that. All of it, I'm going to do three different tutorials, one on each part, more or less. But anyway, so starting with that, we're going to need some Spidalon beading thread. So obviously white is the best one to use, but I don't know if that's going to show so well. How's that going to look on there? Yeah, that should be all right. So basically the amount of thread that you need to use is equivalent to around about four times the um, the length that you want for each string. So if we want to go from here to about here, something like that, you need a piece that's going to be four times that length. So around about a meter, a little bit less, something like that. Um, it's always better to have too much than not enough. So I've cut myself a piece which hopefully will be about that length. And the way I'm going to do it, there's a couple of ways that you can do it. Number one is that you can weave a thread. So this will give you a nicer, tighter finish. But <coughs> if you want to, uh, yeah, if you want to do a nicer, tighter finish, the best way is weaving into the back of your work, somewhere down here into the back of the pendant until you're, and then weave your work until it's exiting from that bead. It doesn't matter if it's exiting from the top side or if it's exiting from the bottom side, either side is fine as long as it is exiting from that bead right there. There is another option, which is the one which I will do just because it's a little bit quicker, which is where essentially you just take your thread well, do you know what? I'll show you both. I'll show you both methods. We'll start with the one that's a little bit more secure. The other one's a little bit quicker. So anyway, the secure method, I'm going to just weave around this back of our work a few times just to weave, just to bring my thread in. So if I just pass all the way through, leaving a tail enough that I can cut it off, weave it in and cut it off, I'm going to just pass into that first bead there pull all the way through and then I'm going to use a blanket stitch to tie it to this little space just here. So if you look closely you can see there's little bridges of thread under here. We want to join, tie a knot onto that little bridge of thread that joins these two beads one to the next. So if we pass through there you'll see that the thread will become like a bit of a loop shape. So we have a nice little loop. Keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling. And if we just pass through that loop, that will allow us to create our first little knot. So I'll just pull my thread through. I don't need as much of a tail as I've got just here. So if I just keep pulling the thread through a little bit, it should hopefully get in position. There we go. And I'll just... There we go, that's enough of a tail. So just pull that through and that's going to create what is called a blanket stitch knot. So I can just pull on both threads, there we go. That's the first knot. And then I'll go up into the next bead. Pull that all the way through. And we can tie another blanket stitch knot around here. So between these two beads just inside here Pass your needle under that little bridge of thread all the way through until, look at that, there's a small loop. Take your needle back through that loop. Get that tail thread out of the way. It's a bit caught there. Try not to get it caught. And then just pull, 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 and that little knot will tie nicely into there. And we can just continue now. So I'll go into this bead over here. Just following the shape of the right angle weave. So you know how we've, I told you it was made from cubic right angle weave, which the video is going to give a nice detailed tutorial on cu cubic right angle weave. But basically we want to weave around till we're exiting from either side of this bead here. So that's probably enough knots for now at least. So let's weave into here. And then I'll go around up into this bead. It doesn't matter. If you want to tie some extra knots just to make it a bit more secure, you can do into here, up into this one. And like I said, it doesn't matter which way you exit from that bead, just bring it into position. There we go. And now we're exiting from that third little bead. So see, 
This is bead number one on the outside bottom. This is bead number two just here, and here's bead number three. So now, at this point, we can pick up three of our size 10 seed beads. This is a really, really quick and easy, um, uh, easy little way of doing this. Happy birthday, by the way, to Nancy. Uh, she said it was her birthday. She's from Pennsylvania. She said her it was a big birthday yesterday. She turned 70. Uh, so a big happy birthday to you, Nancy. Thank you for watching. Uh, glad you could be here, and I hope you enjoy the tutorial. Uh, so anyway, now that I've got my three beads, you can see the thread's nice and firm on there. Three beads is more than enough. Now all we have to do is take one of our gorgeous little shell pearl beads just here. So we'll thread our shell pearl on. See, look, you can see how gorgeous that is. It's far superior to like a glass pearl. These being made from the, the nacre, the mother of pearl, just makes them so much more lustrous. Uh, threads on down. And then we're going to just space them. One seed bead one pearl one seed bead one pearl one seed bead one pearl and essentially you just keep going until it's the size that you would need it to be approximately so you can do both of these for the beginning both of these sides simultaneously Jan over on YouTube says happy birthday Nancy so even though you can't see it because you're on Facebook over on YouTube we got people saying happy birthday to you over there as well <coughs> so yeah just continue now I'll zoom out a bit because at this point obviously doing this on a bead mat is far easier but you just continue going one bead, one pearl, one bead, one pearl, all the way through. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Like that, adding your little beads as you go until it's the size that you need. So I've been making this one for Maxine's size, so that works out as... 20 little pearls. So in the end, I'll just show you how many it equates to. Uh, let's just keep on threading a few more. One, two, how many have I done? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus a, per a seed bead. Then we have nine. Seed bead and 10, seed bead, and 11, and you just keep going, keep threading, keep threading with as many as you want. So I would say probably for a, <coughs> a relatively small necklace, uh, 20 beads is probably a good amount. If you want a slightly larger necklace, uh, you might want to go with 22 beads because don't forget, every bead that you add, every single bead that you add is actually adding one bead on this side and one bead on this side. So with these all being six millimeter, these beads, by adding one extra bead, that ends up adding one extra seed bead, which is about two mil. So plus a six mil bead. So this times two. So that's about about half an inch, if not more, for every bead that you add. So if we just keep going, you can just figure it out till it's exactly the size that you think is best for you. Which, how many have I done? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'll do five more. I wasn't going to, but I will. And just keep going. You can see as well, the color of these are gorgeous, these pearls. Just the quality of them is, is amazing. You can, of course, if you wanted to, do um, your fresh... Uh, you could do them in freshwater pearls if you wanted to make it ultra spectacular. Otherwise, you could also do it in just glass pearls if you wanted to make a less expensive version. So how classy you make it is entirely up to you, dependent on... Whoops, I dropped a pearl there. On which beads you want to use. So... The seed beads as well that I've used are a gorgeous galvanized silver color. 
but you can use other colors. For example, our Empress one uses more of like a, a dark blue hematite color, which I've got a little sample bit of it just here. It looked a little bit dark. I was going to film with this one, but it was a bit dark, so I didn't continue with it. But anyway, I'll, I'll just keep threading these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. One more little bead to go. So I'll put my seed bead and there's my 20th little bead there. There we go. So that gives us 20 little beads here. If you figure that out, you can do the same on the second side and then try it on, more or less. So what I recommend doing is, like I said, you want to make sure, because we have this piece facing the back, to finish this little thread off, we need to make it simultaneous, uh, sorry, uh, the same as the other side. So we need to go one, two, three little beads, and that's going to finish that thread off. So when we come to our clasp section, which if I measure this, this little piece here, works out as... Let's just measure that up. So that there is about six and a half inches or so, round about six and a half inches, or somewhere close to about uh, maybe 16 and a half centimeters. Six and a half inches, 16 and a half centimeters is round about where we are with that one. So if you think about that, it's also going to be the same on the second side so that's another six and a half inches plus we have the width from our little piece just here which equates to about three quarters of an inch at this point which is around about two centimeters there and then of course we have our clasp section so you need to take all of these amounts into account so if you have a look, that's about four centimeters from one side to the other, or one and one and about three quarter inches or so, something like that. So take those amounts into a, into account when you do that. So your width of your clasp plus the width from here to here, and then however many additional beads you want by that, half of that, so that it works out uh, exactly. <laughs> the distance. So anyway, now that we've got our string of beads added on, we have to remember we're coming into the back of this clasp. Don't accidentally do it into the top, but also I find that it is good that you lay it out like this. So because it's like this, we've got, we know we need to attach to this side. If I accidentally attached it to this side, when I went to go and wear it, it would end up that this would attach with the crystal side, and this would be in the reverse. So your whole necklace would end up twisted if you did that. So be very, very careful at this point that you make sure you attach to the bottom corner on the same side. So this is the bead just here. It doesn't matter if you go into it in this direction or this direction, either way is fine. So just uh, let's just go through that endmost corner bead. So if you were doing a three strand version, you could either do it to this corner here uh, and have a smaller bar piece. So for example, see how this bar has seven rows. Look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows. The reason I've done seven rows is so that I can do, um, if, you, if you look at that, you can see it's got one bead here, then a space, one bead here, and then a space, a third bead, a space, and a fourth bead. So that's seven is more or less four beads with a bead in between each one. If I was only going to do three, it was, uh, you could do it either with five, or you can use the gaps in between. So instead of going from the corner, you can go from this bead, skip that one, do the central most bead, skip that one, and then do this one here. But essentially you want to end up with making sure you have an even number of beads spacing of your thread. So whether you're doing three strands, four strands, whatever, however many strands you want to do, you could even do it with just one if you wanted to and just go straight to the clasp. You can do that, but just this piece you vary. But the video covers that, so don't worry. 
Anyway, so now that we're exiting this, we're going to go around this little right angle weave where we're attaching to, to make sure it's a little bit more secure. We wanna make this extra secure. We don't want it loose in any way. And if you've got the weight of all of those pearls coming off one bead, it can become a little bit loose over time. So you wanna make sure you go around that right angle weave all the way through it until we end up back exactly where we were. There we go. And now we can use this little right angle weave here to pull our thread nice and tight so that there isn't any space in between. So see that? There's no space between any of these pearls, but let's just pull it nice and tight as we can while we're doing this. And now what we're going to do is pick up, so you know how we finished with one, two, three beads? We're gonna pick up one and two seed beads like this, and we're gonna go back down the very first seed bead before the pearl. So the one nearest the pearl so that we have two on one side and two on the other side, see there? So that bead there, pass through that, and we're gonna go all the way back down our pearls here. So see that? We'll go through here. And again, this is going to help us to get a nice, tight, firm finish. See that? Look at that. That's nice and close down there. So keep it firm and thread all the way back down. Now, don't forget, of course, when you're wanting to check your size, stop at this point, because if you need to undo it and go, do you know what, I need one more bead, this is secure enough that it will hold it in position while you try it out. But if you want to try this and you go, do you know what, this is one bead too many or one bead not enough, this is the point at which you would do this second side, and then you can check that that is the correct side. So I've already done the measurement for Maxine's neck. So I know that it is 20 beads for her, but this is the point at which you would do your check for your neck. So this is the part that's gonna go from the back of your neck right to sort of the nape just here where you want the pendant to sit. So that's this point here. I already know what length I want it, so I'm gonna just continue now. And I'm gonna weave all the way back down into this very last seed bead just here. So at this point, we'll thread on down, just take your time with it, going through all of these lovely little pearls. The good thing is because I'm using Spidalon thread, uh, which you can get, again, it's in the link in the description, it's nice and fine so that even though, much like freshwater pearls, how the holes are quite fine, these ones you can pass through them multiple times with your spidal on. If you were using like a thicker thread, like a or even a heavyweight um, fire line, which I wouldn't recommend fire line, it would probably be too stiff, uh, you would end up with um, not being able to go through the, th the the beads as many times. So by using a nice, very, very strong, but very, very fine thread, you end up with a stronger overall weight because you can go through it multiple times. You've got the strength of many threads rather than just one stronger thread. Because if you think about it, if the thread is 20% weaker, if you're going through it three times, that's still significantly stronger than if you had a thread that is 20% stronger, you know? But that said, Spiderline is, a Spiderlon is very, very strong thread. So just keep going, we're almost there now. We're down back at the end. So at this point, see how there's like some small spaces just here in our beads? We're gonna fix that in just a second. So we'll end up exiting now. See that from that very, very first seed bead in that group of three, the one after the very, very last pearl. So pull, 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 all the way through. It's a bit like the Three Little Pigs story. Uh, we'll go all the way through, give it a nice tug to try and get it a bit firmer. And now we're gonna pick up two seed beads, one and two. 
And we're gonna go into the other side of this size eight bead here. So through that bead there, so that we're coming out on the same side that these beads are on here. So look, the beads are on this side. So let's go through this bead onto that side there. Pull all the way through. And just like before, we're gonna go around this right angle weave once more to make it extra secure. So just try and keep it away from the beads. Go through that bottom one just here, like so. Pull all the way through, try and keep the thread on top. Back up. And into that last little bead just there. Back to where we started. And pull it through. There we go, and look. We have a lovely, nice little connection here, and now we can make it even stronger. So we'll go back up into these beads here and into our first pearl and seed bead. Now at this point, give it a check. Make sure that your clasp, see look, it's gonna sit like so. Just pop that down. Stop misbehaving, there we are. So that's gonna sit like this. See, that's gonna give us that lovely, nice, neat little bit in there. So once we've done that, we're going to start using some more blanket stitch knots. So check how long this thread is. You don't want it to be much longer than this full length here, just because if it gets too long, it can be a little bit more difficult to, to tie the knots. But at this point, what we'll do is just pick up our thread and you know how we did some of those blanket knots at the beginning go underneath the little bridge of thread here and just keep it all the way through until we have a small loop and then back all the way through that little loop just try and keep this bit exactly in that gap. The first knot is the most difficult. After that, they become much easier. So pull it all the way firm, get it really, really tight. And then finally, firm that up, give it a tug, and there you go. So now we can go through here and you can just do the occasional knot. If you wanna do them every purl, you can do that. If you're uh, a little bit lazier and you don't wanna do that many, you can just go do some every, I don't know, three pearls, four pearls, whatever. But just there you go, make the loop, go through it, and tie the knot. You'll also find that this helps to give it a uh, greater amount of strength too. So there you go. See, look at that. So you just keep tying knots, tying knots, tying knots, go underneath, and back through the loop, and then just try and keep that aligned nicely with that little space See there? Pull it all the way through, and that's one lovely, very, very firm, nice little piece just there without a single space in between. So by doing it in that way, you get a really, really lovely finish. So now, let's do our next little piece, shall we? So what we'll do you now, if we zoom out, it's gonna be this one just here. So we're gonna connect not, we're already connected to this bead here. If I zoom in, you can see that. This is the bead we're connected to just there, that size eight there. So we're gonna skip the next size eight and with a brand new thread, so skip this one, with a brand new thread, we're gonna come out of this one just here and add our next one. So this one I'll do in the other method which works very, very similarly, but essentially, once you've had enough of doing knots, you can 
weave back into here and firm it back up to make it a little bit firmer if you want to. Otherwise, just cut off the excess thread and that's finished. Like for example, right now, because I've done a couple of knots, if I was really lazy, but I don't recommend it, especially because you want to make sure this piece lasts a long time. Uh, you know, it's, it's quality enough to almost be heirloom level. The Queen certainly thought so. Hers was obviously considerably more, uh, <laughs> more valuable, but still, this is a gorgeous piece um, that if you were going to do it right, you know what I mean? So don't be lazy and, and just go, yeah, that's enough. Go and do it, but if you couldn't be bothered, just cut it off now. It's up to you. So anyway, let's do our next one. So when it comes to doing the next piece, I already know how many it's gonna be, but I will do the process so that you can see. So anyway, let's grab ourselves again, another piece of thread. If I can find my thread, be a problem if I can't. Where are you, Mr. Thread? Where did you go? Ah, oh, here it is. So yeah, if we now continue, grab myself another thread off of my bobbin. So, keep unwinding, unwinding. This gives us also something else that you can do when you're doing this, which I forgot to tell you, I'd already done it with my other piece, is that you can sort of give it a bit of a stretch if you want to, just to take a bit of the slack out of it so that when you use it over time, it's already stretched rather than letting it stretch itself. So that's probably enough thread just there. Get my scissors, give it a cut. So yeah, just sort of wear it out a bit, stretch it a little, give it a little tug, a bit of a pull like this, just to get it, you know, a little bit looser, as it were. Go and grab your needle again. And now this time, again, this is another way of doing it, which is very, very similar, but the difference is that you don't clog up, if if you will, the back of your work so much. So you know how we had to weave a thread in all around here and then through there and through here and we're tying all knots into the back of our work. When you're doing that with multiple strands, it can become a little bit congested. Let's chop this one off. Um, yeah, it can be a little bit congested in there. So uh, because we don't want to completely over... If you're using a thicker thread than our Spidalon, it might become a little too full that it's difficult to work with. So what you can do is just start sort of somewhere in the middle of your work. So pick up a seed bead and a pearl, a seed bead and a pearl, seed bead and a pearl. See, there's always multiple ways of doing things. Thread them on down, and then we'll go one, two, three seed beads like that. So it's pretty much exactly the same, if you will. But now, instead of weaving it all through, we're going to just go straight into this little bead here. Now be careful that your beads don't come off the end when you're doing this. So pull it all the way through, and just leave a small tail like this. If you've got one of these little um, thread stoppers, which I should have one, maybe, unless I already took them for use earlier. Do I have one here? Yes. If you have a little something like this, it can be very useful. So these are little thread stoppers, which you can get them off our website if you want. They're very, very useful. You can just attach it to the end of your thread, and now your beads can't come off. Ta-da, handy. So anyway, pull that through till you have a good sized tail, which this is more than enough. And we're gonna go around this right angle weave here to secure it, give ourselves a nice bit of strength at that attach point through here, then through the next bead. Just continue around into this bead here. And then finally back to the bead where we started from. Like so. And this is more than enough. So we can go like this. See that? Pick up two beads. One. Two beads. And we can pass 
through this little pearl, this little seed bead just here. So see that? See how we've got one, two, three. We've picked up two. We'll go through that one there. So if you find this method easier, it's up to you. It's however you prefer doing it. But now what we can do is just pull these two down and what you can do is even tie these to each other at this point to try and get it nice and firm locked against here. Obviously, if you do do that, you will have a small knot there which can make things a bit awkward later, but I'll do it anyway just to show you. So just go underneath the threads like that. Same as how you would start your shoelaces. And then as you pull that, it's going to give it a nice little tight knot there. So if you want to go through it, do another one of those knots, it will be more secure, but we don't really want to do that as yet. Uh, we'll just use more knots rather than such firm ones. We can do our firm knots at the end. So now let's pass with our needle up through this bead and the following seed bead. Doing this on a bead mat is far simpler, by the way. I definitely recommend using some form of bead mat rather than a hard surface like what I've got here. Um, and now you can tie your two threads together again if you want to. Just simple overhand knots, just small ones that will help secure things a little bit. Mm, don't get caught on there. There we go. Pull, pull, pull. Pull that. There we go. And that'll just sort of help that tie as well. And now I think that's enough knots for now. That will give us the start of our piece. We can now just go through these beads that we've already added. So they've already got two threads through them. Through that bead. I don't know why I'm doing this with my offhand. There we go. Through there, through the seed bead. And the next pearl, and then the seed bead. And pull it all the way through. Like that. And now we can even tie these two threads together if we want to. One more time. So left over right, like how you start your shoelaces. Exactly the same. Pull tight. That's going to give that a little piece just there. And that'll do for now. Let's now just thread on more beads. So we'll do another pearl. Followed by another seed bead. Keep these out of the way. And then another pearl, another seed bead. So I'm not going to go through the whole process of this one again, but I will show you something that's very useful for trying to figure out the exact size you need it to be. Like this here, keep going. Seed bead, pearl, seed bead, pearl. And just compare them. So put them side by side, lay it how it should be sitting. So if we've got it sat like this here, this is where this one will be sitting sort of thing. That's sort of our, our neck is inside here. So we want to make sure we have enough pearls that it's going to get all the way to there. So just continue now. Seed bead and a pearl, seed bead and a pearl. Seed bead. See, look, I'm using a bead mat to do this part and it's way easier than trying to do it on my hard surface there. There we go, keep going. Get out a few more of my pearls. Seed bead and a pearl. Seed bead. Tell you, I, I don't know why, but singing while I'm beading is just something I always do. Just, you know, there's always some form of song lyric for no matter what somebody says. Now, uh, the other option with this, obviously this is just to do it in a simple method. We would also be able to do this with proper pearl knotting. So instead of having seed, uh, little seed beads in between, you could knot your pearls, which, uh, yes, Amy D over there says, I think this would be better knotted than seed beads in between. I think you're absolutely right there, Amy. It could well be much better with your proper knots because it is such a... Uh, 
a fantastic piece. So if you have never seen that video, I'll stick a comment down below a bit later, which has it. But uh, we have a fantastic video for doing pearl knotting. It is the best technique you will see. Jermaine learnt it from uh, a really specialist pearl artist who lives way, way north in uh, Queensland, Australia. She flew specifically to teach with this guy who uh, is a specialist pearl knotter and learned from him his fantastic technique. And he's allowed us to put the, uh, the video on YouTube showing how to do his proper professional method. So if you've never done pearl knotting before, uh, don't bother with the not so good methods. Just use Jermaine's amazingly excellent method. I just realized I got a second seed bead in there. So just be careful as you're doing that to make sure you don't forget those. You can just unthread your beads, which is always nice and easy to do. Pull those off. There we go. And then as we continue now, <coughs> getting back onto topic. If we just continue adding bead after bead after bead, I'll show you once we get there. Just re-thread my needle. There we are. How we can perfect the size of our piece. <coughs> pearl seed bead. Pearl. Seed bead. How many have I added, I wonder? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 already. Wow, okay. So with 20 already, we can compare. So the way that this would sit on your neck is that this is going to sit invariably something like this. So because of gravity at the back of your neck, it's going to rest on your neck like this. So make sure that you sit it like this when you're trying to do your calculations based on the size. So stretch it like this so that you've got a nice sort of neck shape in there. You can use these uh, these boards. I've seen that people have sort of specialist boards for doing this process. But if you have a look just there, you can see if we just get it to sit nicely exactly on the outside, you can go, OK, we're not quite there yet. We need to add at least one more pearl. So we'll add one more. And of course, we can now check that. No, not quite there yet either. We'll go one more pearl. So we need a seed bead and a pearl. And that's going to bring us now way closer. Look at that. See that? So now, just by laying it out like this, you can see how good of a, of a join that's going to give us. See, that's like a perfect, that's going to sit on your neck beautifully. So now we can pick up three seed beads. One, two, three. And see how we are connected. On our class piece, we connected here. We want to skip this one and go into the next one. So this is going to give us a nice even spacing. This is for four. If you were going to do um, a three strand, you could go straight for the middle one if there was one. But anyway, um, so we, we we're already in this. We'll skip this one. You can go into it in this direction or this direction. It doesn't matter because we're going to do both sides of it in just a moment. Pull it all the way tight. Go around that right angle weave, which also at this point here, if you need to get maybe one different... Um, <coughs> one different bead, uh, like just a teeny, teeny, tiny difference in size, not a whole bead's worth. You can just use one or, or like a couple of extra seed beads at this point just to extend this part. But if you can keep it with similar, then it will also work. But yeah, this method works. It doesn't matter the size that you're doing as long as you make your first row exactly the correct size. So do do both sides of your necklace. So when you're making this for you, do this one and then do this one before you do these ones. Make sure this 
plus this fits you. If that fits you, after that, everything is easy peasy breezy and you're not gonna have any problems whatsoever. You can just add one a little longer, add one a little longer, add one a little longer, until eventually you've added all of your strands. So if you're getting our kit, you'll make three strands. Uh, if you wanna get an, if you wanna get the kit plus an extra strand, they are MOP6001. Uh, you will be able to get that, get one extra strand and it will be more than enough beads to do that fourth row if you wanted to. But anyway, we're gonna just weave now back through that first seed bead before the pearl and we can continue all the way back down this whole piece just here. So just now at this point, make sure it is extra firm it's going to sit fairly nicely, but we don't want any gaps in here. So pull it really firm just now. And if you want to, you can even start tying your knots now. But otherwise, weave all the way down, come all the way back down, and then do a third row just to make it extra strong. So there you go. That is both different methods that you can use to do your pieces just there. And then eventually, you'll have all of your... Uh, little ones strung up and it just looks so so spectacular so of course the kit that we are doing is the str three strand version because we didn't want to make it any more expensive than it already is um, which I'll show you on the website uh, in just a moment we do also have the pre-order for the instructions they're gonna be ready uh, on Tuesday they're gonna be available on Tuesday sorry um, so if you want to get the instructions and don't want to have to buy the kit, you can do that. But if you buy our kit, the next few days, uh, we're doing an offer where you will, of course, you always get the full instructions for how to make this design if you want to. So if you want to do it, um, but if you get it in the next few days, we have a bonus bracelet pattern, our Vienna bracelet pattern, that you will also get completely for free. So I'll just show you the uh, the website in just a moment. I'll just get this down to the end so that you can see how it's going to look. And then, see, look, we're really starting to get there now. And this beautiful little clasp, if we just sit it there, I'll turn it over so you can see what I'm doing. Put that there and that there. See, look, it's really coming together quite nicely. It's looking really spectacular, I think. I should try and chop all these threads out. But anyway, there you go, see? So just continue, 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 and then eventually you will have this. Or if you're getting our kit, if you just want to make it in three strands, um, uh, you can just the 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 three strand version as well. So if we look on the bead spider website, which is just here, here we go. So if we pop on over to the bead spider website, there you can see there's the three strand version, which is equally as elegant, but it saves you a little bit of a uh, bit of money as well. If you want, you don't have to have the full four strand version. Both look absolutely fantastic, though. Everything else is the same. It's just got an extra strand. You would need an extra strand of pearls, basically. So if you want to get that, I will show you. If you click on that big picture right there, um, click on that one there <coughs> it'll take you to the page where you can view all of these products so for example as well i should just show you if you scroll on up on that page there's the video so if you've missed the beginning of this tutorial you can come onto this page click this and you can just rewind it this is going to be here forever this is going to be indefinitely there so anyway scroll on down this is the diamond color which i'm wor working with right now i should also mention that this colorway matches exactly with this bracelet just here so if you want to get the matching bracelet as well uh you can get that one um the bracelets still for the next few days only until sunday you can get 15 percent off when you buy any three bracelets uh so come on down there are your bracelet colors just here one, two, three, four, five. That's what the tutorial I did last week. You can go and watch that anytime. Um, if you want to pre-order the pattern, it's just here. 
Uh, we do also have the bracelet pattern available. It's not on this page, I should say. But anyway, uh, if you have a look, this is the limited edition Empress Elizabeth necklace just here. So this is the one that uses those gorgeous rainbow beads and does it in like a black, a really dark, deep blue color. That's this one here. So if you want to get that one, it has absolutely everything included. You've got all of your thread and, of course, all of that included. But it makes that really gorgeous, dark, sort of like nighttime version uh, just there. But anyway, the one that I've just been demonstrating is our Elizabeth in the Diamond color. That one just there makes it three strand. You can go and get that one. But for example, if you say, I want to get this limited edition one, I want to get the Empress which the stock is very, very limited. I will say once uh, once you've like this, it'll only be for a very, very short time that they're available for sure. But anyway, uh, once you've added that to your basket, you can see right here, there it is in my basket. If we view the basket for the next week, you will also get the Vienna bracelet pattern download, which is another pattern using our Aurora micro crystals. You'll get that pattern completely for free when you get that See there, free. Uh, when you um, when you get that, so just scroll on down, proceed to checkout. If you want a printed copy of instructions, you can. When you pr proceed to checkout, there's a little box on this next page. I'll show it to you. Just come on down here. If you type a little note down here at the very very bottom. Come in here and say, actually, I'd rather the printed version. If you want the, the, the PDF version, don't type anything in here. We will email you on Tuesday with the instructions and we'll send your kit right away. If you want a printed copy, you won't get the PDF version. You'll just get the printed version. That one, type that in there and then we'll be sending those off probably on Tuesday. Um, also, I should mention when you're checking out, if you click this one just here, make sure that's ticked. Uh, you can get our new, you can sign up to our newsletter and we give you a voucher to try out some of our other beading patterns. You can get a fiver's worth of beading patterns just there by signing up. But anyway, there you go. You've got your kit, plus you've got that free instruction there. If you are a member on the Bead Spider website in the UK, you can get free shipping. We've got very, very um, competitive prices that we do for our shipping so we ship worldwide you can shop in pounds british pounds you can shop in euros you can shop in us dollars um and then all of that will be done automatically and you can shop like a local and then as i said our shopping uh, shipping rates worldwide shipping it's very very affordable i think it works out starts from eight pounds british pounds uh which I think is about $9.60 or something like that. And you can, it doesn't matter how much you order, you could have a massive order from £9.60. That's where it starts. We have a flat rate on our standard, but if you would prefer tracked, so standard does not include tracking. If you don't care about that, £9.60 uh, $9 or something like that um, <coughs> in, in, in US dollars. Um, but if you would like a tracked, we uh, send you an invoice which starts from $14.50, I believe, and covers you for quite a bit. Um, so it's usually going to be no more than, I don't know, 16 or 17. Just depends. If you've got a massive order, maybe. But anyway, that is that gorgeous design there. Ah, actually, if you click over here on Elizabeth Bracelet, there's the pattern for the Elizabeth Bracelet. If you want to get the Elizabeth Bracelet pattern, that's a fiver. Uh, that's with cubic right angle weave. It's a nice basis to start with doing that double width cubic right angle weave. Um, and then you just need the micro crystals, some size 10 or 11 seed beads. They're the same size, which I can show you actually the uh, size comparison down here. See, look, there's the size 11 micro crystals. There is a check made Preciosa size 10 bead. And then these two here are Japanese size 11s. So if you've never seen the size comparison chart before, look, they're all pretty much the same size. The only difference is that the Mayuki beads are a little bit thinner from hole to hole. The Preciosa are sort of in the middle. And then the Toho are the, 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 the widest. And then the, the Micro Crystals are pretty much about the same. Somewhere really close to a Mayuki. Say the width of the that is about the same as a Mayuki. So yeah, those are those different things. But yeah, go check out our website. We've got a whole 
tutorial library where look videos video tutorials here or you can check out all of our patterns which we have many many patterns on here there's a hundred and something so if you get that five pound voucher you can get a discount um, there you go. Look, there's even a free earring pattern with these cute little skeletons. Go, uh, go check it out. But anyway, the pendant part, the video for that, I'm hoping I can get it edited this weekend. So if you're watching this not today, which is Friday the 4th of November, hopefully it's already ready. I'm going to put them all into one little playlist so that you can watch them. This part is going to be coming, but I'm also going to do a video on the, the clasp section at the back there. So yeah. That's pretty much it for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you thought it was a, a nice design. Um, um, but yeah, so these little beads, they are absolutely gorgeous. We put together this design for you all to have a go at. Of course, obviously it is a tribute to the late queen, which if you did not see it, there it is there. This is that final, uh, final little look just there. Um, the queen herself had that, like I said, gifted to her in 1974, I believe. Diana wore it to a banquet. banquet. I think she may have worn it a couple of times, actually. And then again, uh, as a tribute to her, Kate Middleton actually wore that one. Princess uh, Catherine wore that one to the, the Queen's funeral and also, I believe, to um, Prince Philip's funeral as well. So yeah, there's that gorgeous little necklace. Our version, this is my version, my little tribute to Her Majesty um, by making that little design. So I, I wanted to have a go at it. I really wanted to allow you guys to have a go on making it. So anyway, thank you all very, very much for joining me. Like I said, we will be having um, the other videos, the other parts of this video in a few, a few time, a, a few days time. Um, <coughs> uh, but the, the, oh, and that's another thing I should tell you. So Joe, we have a, la a lovely lady, Joe, who's going to be doing tutorials on a Tuesday. So this coming Tuesday at the same time as when we go live on a Friday, um, they, she's going to be doing a lovely tutorial then, um, but if, uh, so if, make sure, I, I will send out an email letting you all know when her tutorial is going to be so that you can watch it, but she's going to be on every Tuesday as well, it seems. We're, we're thinking that that's going to, that's going to work well for the, for the lead up to Christmas, and then obviously we'll have a break over Christmas, but... Uh, for the next, this coming Tuesday, she's going to be going live. I'll be here with her as well, of course. We're going to be doing it together. But yeah, the um, the the Australians uh, say that there's there's no custom charges, which is good. But anyway, um, so yeah, they are. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, on Tuesday there'll be another tutorial, and then oh, I don't I don't want to I don't want to. I don't want to tell you. There's some. There's some another really, really good tutorial coming next Friday. So make sure you're here as well for next Friday because I've got another really, really good uh, tutorial coming. Jermaine's been working on this one, and I'm just uh, going to be doing the finishing touches. I could. I, do I want to? It's right there. I could show it to you, but I don't like to. I want to. I want to. I want the surprise to come in the email, so that you have to. If you want to know what's coming in advance, you need to be on our email list. That's that's the way you got to find out. But anyway, uh, purple penny. No, but purple penny. I I've just seen your question. Sorry about that one. Um, no, these these are made from shell, so um, they they are indeed. Um, yeah, from from actual shell. But if you want to. Just send me a little email because we can organize something special for you if you if you if you prefer Just let me know and um, if you send us an email we can organize something just for you. I don't mind. But anyway um, Yeah, so thank you all very very much for watching. That's pretty much it for today Make sure you're here on Tuesday for I'll be back on Tuesday with Joe and then I will be back again on Friday uh, with another tutorial, but we got lots of pre-record videos coming in the next couple of weeks as well. So keep your eyes peeled to our YouTube channel. As per usual, of course, hit the like button, subscribe, you know, 
put comments down below. Comments actually are a great way of helping to share the video. So videos that have lots of comments of people asking questions, we, we're looking at the comments so we can answer your questions if you've got any. Um, if you put a comment down below or even if you're just going, hey, this video is great, we don't care, put a comment down below. It always helps to spread the message. The algorithm goes, hey, lots of people are commenting on this and they're saying nice things. We're going to share it to more people. So comment, like, share, subscribe to the channel, all of those things, both on Facebook and on YouTube. Anyway, thank you all very, very much for watching me today. I will see you all next week. Have a lovely, lovely weekend. Thanks all and goodbye.